Hello and welcome to Entertainment Tech's tutorial on how to set up your Nintendo 64 emulator and how to configure it for online netplay. Now, if you're worried that you think you don't know anything about Nintendo 64 or emulators in general, don't worry, we're going to start from the beginning. And if you think you know a little bit but not enough, once again, we're taking it from the basics here, so you have nothing to worry about. Let's get started, and first thing we're going to need to do is download the emulator packs itself. Luckily, we can do that very easily. I want you to go ahead and open up your favorite internet browser. Mine happens to be Google Chrome, so we're going to open that up, and we're going to go to www.entertainmenttech.net. And you're going to get this page here with our main stream. Go ahead and hit information. And this looks a little bit bare right now. We're going to change that in the future, but for now, this is okay. I want you to click this Nintendo 64 picture right here, and that's going to start the etn64package.zip. And what this is, it's a RAR file, or a zipped folder, and we're going to want to extract this so we can get the files that are inside it. If you don't have WinRAR, you're going to need that software. Uh, I I'm not going to cover how to get that in this video, just go ahead and Google WinRAR and download that and from there you'll be able to follow us along with the tutorial again. So my downloads are all managed in Google Chrome's downloader, which you can see here. But we're going to cover generally whatever browser you might be using. So we're going to go ahead and close this out and if you did download it, most browsers are going to save what you downloaded in your downloads right here. So we're going to get you to there. You're going to want to go over here and go to your computer and OSC. And then over here, click Users. It's going to be your name. My name is Robert, of course. So we're going to click Robert. And finally, Downloads. And you'll see here we have everything we've downloaded. And right here, the ETN64 package can be found. We're going to want to right click that and click open with. And you see here I have WinRAR I Archiver. You may not have WinRAR I Archiver shown there, but that's not a problem. Go ahead and hit choose default program. And it's going to bring up this list of programs that you can open up. And you're going to want to go ahead and if WinRAR Archiver isn't here, hit other programs. And it should be down here, but if it's not, that's okay too. Go ahead and hit browse and you're going to have to navigate through your system to wherever you installed WinRAR 2 and uh, click that and hit open on WinRAR. But if it is here, just go ahead and click WinRAR Archiver. Okay, so it's going to give you this warning, it's not free, just go ahead and next that out and hit Extract 2. And we're going to want to extract it to a location where we know we're going to be able to get to it in the future. A uh, fan favorite, I would say, is our desktop. So let's go ahead and just hit desktop here. If it's not there, you can find your desktop in computer, OSC, users, your name, and desktop right there. And we, we're just going to want to create a new folder, which you can do by hitting backslash and then the name of the new folder. Let's just do N64, how about? Okay, so you can see it's extracting here. We've got uh, all of the ROMs being unloaded, and it looks like it's all done. So we're going to close that out. If we go to our desktop here, you can see N64 right here. I'm going to go ahead and move that up somewhere where I can see it a bit better. And let's go ahead and open that. Now, what you downloaded here is a package of ROMs and other data that you're going to need to play N64 with us here at ET. Let's go ahead and open that folder and open Moopin64, which is the name of our emulator. You have a couple of folders here, language, plugins, ROMs, save screenshots. These are just DLL files needed to run the emulator. And then right here, Moopin64PP, this is your actual emulator. This is the thing that's going to allow you to play the games. So let's go ahead and open that up. But here's something important, right click it and run it as an administrator. This is important because it allows your system to modify files and pretty much you give your system's permission to let it do that. And you're going to open up this window here. And this has, you'll see a list of ROMs here. Uh, don't go ahead, don't click those yet. Those aren't quite ready to be run. But we have some other things we want to take a look at, such as file, emulation, options, utilities, and help. If we click file, we have some options here like load ROM and refresh ROM list. Emulation has some things that are grayed out. Can't quite use that yet. We have options such as video, input, audio, RSP, and general settings. 
utilities, more tools for our ROMs, including Kyera client, which is going to be important later, and help. And uh, these are just generally if you're lost in your emulator, some information about the emulator, and more on that. Now the first thing we want to do is we want to configure our emulator so we can start using it. Now if you do not have a controller that you can plug into your computer, you want to get one. I'm just going to open Google Chrome here and show you some examples of what controllers would work. Go ahead and go to Google and type in, I'm going to type it in images just to show you a picture, but you can go ahead and, and type it anywhere just to get a general idea. Uh, USB controllers. And they're going to look something like this. You can get a Super Nintendo one. You can get a Nintendo 64 one. I have a PlayStation 2. And uh, something like this is what I have. And you can buy these at Walmart. You, uh, you used to be able to buy them at CVS. I don't think you can anymore. Best Buy has them. Uh, just go around. And you can even use a wired Xbox 360 controller or a wired PS3 controller, as long as it has a USB port, which you can see right here. It can be plugged into your computer and used. So if you don't have a controller, that's not a problem. It's going to be a bit harder to play your games, but you don't actually need one. So let's go ahead and get our controls set up. Go ahead and go into Options and Input Settings. Now we have four tabs here, I'm sorry, five, including shortcuts, and you want to hit Controller 1, and first, you want to make sure that you have Plug checked in. What Plug do is you see how one controller and then three others are not plugged. It basically tells your N64 emulator there is one person playing, or two people playing, three people playing, four people playing, on your computer. Now since we're playing online, you only want one person playing. And we're going to go ahead and set our keys up now. So what we have here is the digital pad. And this is on the N64 controller, the up, down, left, right squares on the left hand side. So let's go ahead and set those. I'm going to set them to my keyboard. But once again, if you have a controller, now is the time to use it. Start, let's set that to enter. You hit the button here and then hit the key or button on your controller that you want it to correspond to. Keep in mind if you move your mouse, as you can see I'm doing here, it's going to detect mouse input as what you want that key to be, so be careful with that. And we're just going to set some controls here. We're not really going to be using them, so this is just for show, but uh, you can understand what these are. This is your analog stick, which was the control stick in the middle of your N64 controller. These are the C buttons, the blue, or I'm sorry, the yellow four buttons on the right hand side. And these are your general other buttons, such as your A, B, start, left right and Z. And you remember the Z was in the middle prong and that's pretty important for almost every game. And the last thing we want to do while we're here is go to controller pack and we really want to make sure that this box raw data is unchecked. If you have this checked the online play is going to get really messy. Just keep that unchecked, okay? And so we have everything uh, we have everything set up here. We're going to go ahead and hit save. And let's just verify that everything stayed the way we wanted it to stay. Go back in and it looks like all of our settings have saved. If not, uh, reset them and what you can do is hit save profile here and it's just going to ask you where you would like to save it. Go ahead and save it somewhere in your ROM directory which is right here and next time you can hit load profile and just double tap that file that you just saved and it'll load all your controls back up and go ahead and hit save. Okay so our controllers all set up. What's next? Well the next thing we want to do is go ahead and go back into options and go to go back into settings and you see here we have our plugins. Plugins are the files that are helping us do what we want to do with this emulator depending on which plugin it is. For example the input plugin is what's allowing you to hit keys on your keyboard or your controller and then register them to keys into the game. What we are more interested in is our video plugin. We want to drop this down and we want to make sure we're on Glide 64 Wonder++. Plus Plus. The reasoning for this is that this Wonder plugin fixes a couple of issues, namely Mario Party. If you want to play Mario Party and you're not set to Glide 64 Wonder, it's going to flicker and it's not going to be fun. So just make sure you're set to that. But other than that, all of these are fine. And just going to say something in advance here. This RSP plugin, if you ever start up your emulator and this RSP plugin is missing, just re-download it from the site 
and redo the setup instructions here. It happens sometimes that this plugin gets lost, but don't worry about it. A simple re-download and reset up will fix all your problems. Okay, so our, our video plugin is set up. That was pretty simple. But we have a couple more things to do before we're ready. The next thing we want to do is go back into those settings and go to directories. This here is usually wrong, so we want to remove that and hit add. And we're going to go down to our folder that we put the emulator in. For me, it's desktop. And then what we want to do here is find in the desktop the N64 and the ETN64 package. Keep going down until you find your ROMs folder. This is the one you want. Click on that and click OK. And make sure once you've done that, you hit OK and that it's saved. This is going to refresh your ROM list here, and that's very necessary so your computer knows where your games are. And once you've done that, we're almost done. Just a couple of things left. Go back into settings and just make sure that everything was saved. And these, there's some other options here, but you don't really need to mess with them for the most part. If you do accidentally break something, just try to go in here and check that all these settings are the same as mine. Hit OK. So as long as everything's saved, we're good to go. The very next thing we want to do is, hey, we're almost ready to play. Go ahead and hit Utilities. If you go down here, you'll see Kyera Client, and you'll remember I said that this was important before. Kyera Client, or however you would like to pronounce it, is the online net play system for Moopin64. Let's go ahead and click that. It's going to open up this window, and you're going to see a couple of things here, such as NIC, which stands for nickname, connection settings, change mode, and quit message. You don't really have to mess with quit message or change mode too much. What is important is your nickname, change that to whatever you want, and your connection setting. Now, the connection setting is going to be more complicated. This is dependent on your internet. Go ahead and get a good reading of your internet and determine whether you have a decent connection or a terrible one. A good way to do this is to open up your favorite internet browser and go to speedtest.net. This is a system which is going to show you how fast your internet is in three different respects. So once it boots up here, we can hit begin test and it's just gonna run a test here to show me how fast my internet is. Now I have some pretty decent internet speeds so don't expect if you don't have some computer knowledge or know that you have really good internet to get somewhere close to mine. But if you are close to mine what you're gonna wanna do is go into your N64 emulator and make sure that your connection setting is at excellent. So let's see here I have 51.74 megabits per second of download speed and 10 of upload. That's pretty good. If you've got anywhere close to that, you're golden. And you can set yourself back back in your N64 emulator to about 30, 20, or 15. If you're running a little low on these numbers, what you're going to want to do is set yourself to maybe 12 or 10. Going to 12 or 10 isn't that great though, because sometimes it'll kick you out of the games. Just make sure whoever you're playing with has the same setting, uh, I'm sorry, connection setting as you do. So I'm going to go ahead and pick average, uh, just because it's a mid setting and it'll let us connect with the most people. But if you have a very good internet connection, feel free to go ahead and boost your quality by hitting excellent or LAN, but I do warn you, LAN is going to make it quite laggy. As a general rule, if you're running a game and it's lagging, turn down your connection setting. So once we have all that set up, all we want to do is hit master servers list. And this is going to set up a box which is going to say over here pinged servers and some number. Now this is just running through all the currently existing servers for Kyera client. Go ahead and sort them by ping and I'm just going to explain what ping is here. Ping is how long it takes your computer to send a message to that server. So we obviously we want a server that is close to us and has a low ping. For me, that would be REMS or the Galaxy Black Hole. West Wonderland and Bob's Entertainment are fine too. As a general rule, as long as it's about 300 or below ping, you should be fine. Any of these 1000 plus are going to be very laggy for you, and you probably shouldn't join them. So I'm going to go ahead and connect to REMS here. Just double click it. 
you can see here that we're logging in and the server replied here's the IP of the server in case you need to give your friends the IP and we can see that I'm logged in over here on the right now we have chat and CR buttons here the chat opens up the chat well it should but it didn't and CR is if you want to create a game you can see it opened up the list of games we have and let's go ahead and hit Super Smash Brothers it opened up a game down here which I am currently the only person in but your friends in this list will be able to double click the game and join you when that happens go ahead and hit start and it should boot the emulator up for you if it doesn't you can look over here I'm just gonna go ahead and close this emulator it was a bit loud but anyway uh, if you see over here that someone had dropped out and you your emulator popped up that means that they have a, a problem with their save file and what you should both do is re-download the emulator or if you had saved the file that you downloaded from the site just extract it again I want to make something very clear this is a very very picky way to do emula emulators online if you cannot connect to somebody it probably means you have something different about your <clears throat> about your emulators so let's do something here real quick I want you to open up your N64 ET package and I want you to take this save folder and I want you to just hit right click it and hit copy go to your desktop and hit paste and just keep that right there because in case you ever need to redo your save file you'll have a copy right there and what you can do is just delete this one and then move this copy this one and put it back in the reason this is important is because if you accidentally get a saved game that is different from somebody else's you're not going to be able to play with them online and by doing this instead of re-downloading the file over and over again and waiting for it to finish you'll just have a copy right there to put back in and you'll be hunky-dory again well that's about all you need to know in terms of connecting and playing with other people online I've given you a list of ROMs to play with, which you can double-click to play offline or use Kyera Client to play online. We hope to see you back at ET, and hey, we hope to have you playing with us very soon. Thanks so much for watching. My name is Rob, and I'm signing off.